So here we are with Dave Dumbro and Kevin Fallon, the founders of Speedland, a new trail shoe that is out and it's a little bit different, a different approach. We're going to get down to the, what do you call it? Tax? Tax. What do they call it? The brass tax. Brass tax. Brass tax. <laughs> That's it. We're going to get down nitty gritty. We're going to, I mean, I'm looking at a deconstructed shoe. You can't see it. Well, maybe you can because now we have cameras in the studios. And just to let you know, this is our very first in-studio podcast at the new 1805 Believe in the Run headquarters. Yeah, it's exciting. Super exciting. Yeah. Like, yeah. very exciting. It makes this a pretty special episode. Yeah. You guys are excited, right? Yeah, we are yeah. excited. Yeah. We're, we're honored. Yeah. We, we don't do this every day, so this is fun for us. It, and people, don't get confused. Dave Dumbro is not Joe Rogan. So just in case you think you're <laughs> tuned in for that any, podcast. Anybody who got confused. Yeah, yeah. it's not, not that podcast. He's way cooler. Yeah. Mm. Dave right, is cooler. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's what I meant. Mm. Let's get into, then Joe Rogan? <laughs> let's get into the shoe because that's what we're here about and i want to actually start around like okay why why are you guys making a shoe yeah wh what's the point i've seen nike has shoes yeah. Any there's other brands plenty of trail shoes? shoes out there there's ridiculous amounts of trail shoes out yeah there. you can go to rei and see a wall of yeah. trail shoes columbia uh. you're right about that let me ask you a question back have you ever found a perfect trail shoe for you uh perfect trail shoe i found definitely some trail shoes that i love um i don't know that i found a perfect trail shoe yet yeah and that, that that's that's there you go that's the reason right, right? is right. that there's a lot of shoes that do a lot of things well but maybe not one that does hits all the boxes or checks them all so that's kind of where we set off here it is like if we could build anything we wanted what would that be and this idea of this no compromise approach. Um, and it got us into the world of, we, we call it hyper performance. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where the, the whole idea set off is like within the trail world, what if you could just build a no compromise approach, the optimum trail equipment? And we use the word equipment a lot as well, right? Kevin? Yeah. And I think, you know, the, there are some great shoes out there and, but generally they're built with some kind of compromise to them built to a price point and they're not really we know from 20 plus years in the industry they're not necessarily coming at it from how do i make this the best shoe i possibly can it's how do i make it for this price point is that That's, basically the limiting factor is the price point for sure okay for but sure before we jump into all that mm -hmm. what i want to say is you guys didn't just decide you wanted to make a trail running shoe you kind of had a background in shoe I mean, design, design, build, build engineering. Like, can you give a little background on what your experience was, what the frustrations were in those situations? Because you've worked at Nike, Under Armour, Puma, Puma. Mm -hmm. What other? Any other one? Am I forgetting any? Yeah, I worked on some some other ones as well, but those yeah. are the, those are the big ones. Those are the big yeah. ones. So you know the process. You've been through the process, probably all levels of. Mm -hmm. shoe with all different types of shoes as well yeah. so you know we're focused on running shoes today but pretty much every type of shoe we've had a hand in at some point and from both the innovation side as well as the inline development side too so there's a, there's a little bit of a difference there too when you're looking at a long-term agenda for a big brand and what they're trying to do you might have a little more freedoms to push some things but you still you have guardrails yeah and there's two there's two things pretty much every project you know starts out with one is a brief which I know you guys are aware of. And then the other is usually a, an FOB, <laughs> a target price, you know, that you have to hit. Um, and, you know, on the brief, we kind of organically, I guess, created it together and almost developed it in the workshop. Um, mm -hmm. We can get into that later. But on the FOB, actually, we never really had one. We're like, just are like, you saying for Speedland specifically? Yeah, Speedland that's specifically. Right. Like, we never had, we never had one. And that's unique, at least uh, in my career. And I think for Kevin's, like, there's always an FOB, and we're just like, no, let's just build what we want to build, and then that'll be the what result. it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that is an interesting approach because you have to think about it from a marketing side. That a lot of companies are looking at their shoe as part of a portfolio of shoes. And each one has to yield a certain amount of income for the company, right? Right. Yeah. Especially, sure. especially the the big hitters. Yeah. So yeah. they can experiment to a certain degree as much, right? I mean, we they, see a little bit with like shoes like the uh, the Brooks Aurora BL. Yeah, like there's some definitely like uh, innovation lab type shoes. That yeah. Now I'd classify I'd classify that one as if 
it's in that category. And a calculated risk, yeah. I think, is what it winds up being, you know, and they don't need those shoes to do really anything. They're going to see how well they do. If they consumers respond, then they'll pour some gas on it. It doesn't, there's not a lot of risk, but they still don't do it very often. Yeah. You know? And when they do, it's not usually moving the needle all that far. So you obviously, you know, wanted to design a shoe that had really just put the best materials in it. No limits. No limits to what that may cost, whatever. Here we have, I mean, I think we should just say it's $375 trail shoe. It is. It is. Yeah. And you don't, and yeah, so just talk about that. A well, little I, bit. And, the, and quickly, the first thing, I'd, I'd just reframe it right away and say $375 trail equipment. Yeah. You know, because then you start to think about other things in the cycling industry, you think sure. of things in the ski industry, you think of things in, in these tangential industries, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, it's a piece of equipment. That's actually... A ski boot can run you $1,000, yeah. and you're like, whatever. A right. good cycling shoe yeah. can... can 300, 400. Yeah, 500. And up. Yeah. yeah. So, so explain something like, so obviously the price is something that people are going to look at. Sure. But it's, like you said, there's no FOP. So there's no, and for layman's terms, that's like, Hey, we're going to bring this shoe to market and it's going to fit the $120 market. And this is going to be our competitor to the Pegasus. Right. That kind of thing is normally what goes on at a, at a company that's making a shoe. You guys said, I want to make the best shoe that we can make. We're going to use the best components, put it into the shoe. And, and I'm speaking for you right now. You can probably say this better <laughs> than I can. But why don't you run us down like some of the choices that you made in the shoe and why you made them? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to almost talk about it. Each piece is almost geared towards a different um, Function. functional attribute. So maybe we can just kind of go piece by piece. Um, we, you know, we'll try to keep it kind of moving. But uh, you want to? And, and some of this is, I, I would say, you know, we we try to be as objective as we can, and based on our experience in the industry, you know, we chose, for instance, if, if we start with the outsole, to partner with Michelin. There's some other brands out there that make good outsoles and, and great outsoles. We partnered with Michelin for a couple of reasons. One, they have world-class compounds. It gave us a lot of selection, a lot of choices. Two, they're in footwear already, so that was not like trying to pull a, a new footwear, you know, bring footwear into a new rubber supplier. Yeah. And then they had some technologies existing from mountain biking that we wanted to bring into trail. And we felt like, for instance, the thin web rubber if you look at the sidewall of a mountain bike tire, they're quite thin, millimeter, millimeter and a half. And when you look at rubber on an outsole of a typical shoe, it has to be, you know, two millimeters thick or sometimes a little more for strength for, yeah. for this. And so by using a fabric reinforced web that Michelin does on their tires, but applying it to footwear, we were able to make the web thinner. The whole outsole is a little bit lighter, but still extremely strong. Um, and then the cuttable blocks were something where we actually stumbled across it from a mountain bike tire. And I think it's actually more of a European oriented tire because it was hard to find they in the US. clipping them for downhill racing. So like the specific. downhill races, if they're hard pack, they'd cut them. If they were softer, they'd leave them long. And, and, and it was very compelling to us in that idea of why wouldn't you? tailor the traction based on the course of the given day yeah. and an easy one to translate into trail. It's just one of those things like, why has nobody, nobody's ever done it to our knowledge. And, and, you know, we had 20 plus years in the industry. Yeah. So, you know, it's just kind of interesting seeing it in the mountain bike world and then being like, and I think that's a lot of times how innovations and, and how are born in different categories. Cross you just, over. yeah, you yeah. see something you're like, Oh, you know, and it's also, and, and it's relatable. So, for us, that it was kind of just a you know the light bulb moment. Like, oh, okay, well, let's let's bring that in. And if you're just listening to the podcast, another unique feature of this one is it sort of has wrap walls. Like you're talking about the tire. So imagine uh, the midsole fitting inside of a tire, almost. So like it's a wall that comes up the side, and you have uh, that's the soft, flexible, one millimeter thick. Yep. Uh, wall that you're talking about that wraps the entire midsole and you guys call it a cup well i mean uh, i think that you could call it a cup sole it's it's a modern interpretation of that in the sense that it does wrap up the sidewall it gives you edge stability it gives you some durability just by the nature of it being rubber much lighter though. but it's not a cup sole like you'd think of on an air force one or a, yeah, okay. a fashion shoe in that those are usually quite thick by putting the the textile reinforcer we can keep it really thin 
And for us, in the case of the final process of stitching the upper to the outsole, it's something we would never be able to do. Yeah. With you can also cut rubber. the drainage, which we didn't we didn't touch on. Besides uh, being able to customize the traction, you can also customize the drainage because obviously there's some regions where you're going to run across rivers frequently. There's some places um, you'll you know, never you'll never you'll never go right. across a river. So Utah. You, <laughs> yeah. So it just it just depends. So I think you know there's there's just a lot of different things you ways you can customize this depending on the region where you live or, you know, with a lot of our elites and we can get into that later is we'll customize it by race. Yeah. So, so just to describe it a little more for those that are listening, imagine that you have cleats on the bottom of the shoe, but the cleats have extended almost like diamonds on top of the, the cleat that can be trimmed down. And you guys use, what is the tool that you use to trim them down? Yeah, it's you can either use like a vertical end cutting pliers like we have these, which are really simple. They're just, yeah. you know, you, yeah. ver- you hold them this way. But a wire snip works as well. Oh, okay. And yeah. honestly, you could use a razor blade if you were careful. Right. But these tools just make it actually pretty simple. And it's kind of a nice engaging experience. You just put it on that step. Yeah. and squeeze and there it goes just there it goes it's yeah. off it was, it was so pretty satisfying. it's quick it's, it's it was, very satisfying it's pretty <laughs> satisfying and, and the cut lug looks pretty clean afterwards yeah we yeah. were talking about it today robbie and we were on some um terrain that was sort of muddy mm-hmm. but for the most part was technical i don't know how much the extra lugs in the front would necessarily help but i was thinking on the downhills that the extra lug would be advantageous just to catch some of that mud yeah so i could see like clipping off some of the athlete depending on the terrain they're going to do i could see it what do you think about though like i trim it for the trail that i like here that i'm spending 80 90 percent of my time on yeah but then i'm going to go out to colorado and run with don and i'm Mm -hmm. running on hard pack that maybe i I want it smoother but or i'm going someplace where i want those cleats in the front once i've clipped them though they're 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 gone at that point. yeah it's a one one way operation and there is that limitation do you feel that's going to limit people wanting to like experiment I don't, or you think you're, well it definitely might limit people experiment i think you you said it though at the beginning where 90 percent of my time right is spent running the trails in my region mm-hmm. you know and i think that is good because you're, you're set up there so maybe you do have an additional shoe when you go out to or you have it or you have the same shoe clipped in a totally different way and or you can even have it seasonally like, here's my summer setup here's my winter setup yeah. uh, depending on where you are any other advantages to the way that the rubber wraps the midsole? Well, it's a it's also a stability feature, right? It, it we can go through the pieces, but it allows when the foam drops in, it's a containment unit as well. So, you know, we can we can tune the the drop ins uh, at different durometers of softness, and we can go pretty squishy then because we can uh, contain it with this. Which you know, if you think of most shoes, there's no containment, so you can only go so low on the durometer. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, I want to move on to the next part, and I know there's like an EVA layer, and we could talk, touch on that briefly, but I want to get to this stuff that <laughs> the C word. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, not, there, 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 is an EV, there is a thin, EV, high rebound EVA layer. We won't touch too much on it, but that drops right in to the bottom. So that's, that's kind of the lower level um, high rebound EVA that's right. Ab- it, it's going to give you some cleat deflection and stuff. So it's going to, it's going to act as a little bit of protection. Um, and then we'll get into the, the, the meat of it, I guess. You want <laughs> right. to, you want to touch on the midsole or the, or the, I mean, the it's funny he says meat because it is like a sandwich here. That we're yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are building <laughs> it a is sandwich. The and we just finished sandwich. eating. So yeah. It's Rob, Robbie's I'm, favorite part. I'm amazed that we're not all sleeping right yes. now because we just ate lunch and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah. to Poppy's tacos. Yes. Oh, they were Whoa. delicious. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, you know, P-backs has been the hot material and it feels great. It performs well. We wanted to have that similar underfoot experience. So there's no sock liner, but rather a drop-in midsole okay. out of P-backs. And with the P-backs, though, this P-backs is different than it something is. that we'll see in other shoes like the Saucony Endorphin yeah, line. Yeah, very different. Yeah. So this is a super critical P-backs, okay. which you... You're, I, you know, you've, I, I know you guys have tested a number of shoes that have super critical foam. Right, yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a similar process, but it's not necessarily... Well, there's TPU-based, there's yeah. yes. EVA-based, you got it. and you're saying this is P-backs. P-backs-based. You got it. So this is a super critical p So they're shooting the N2. You know. And is that, like, is that something that's been done before by 
Anyone else that you know? We don't think so. Okay. We're working with another one of our suppliers, and it's new for them. Okay. And, and we've yeah. been a great partner for them in some ways because we're not a Nike or Adidas or somebody who's come and saying, hey, we need a million yeah. pairs. Yeah. Right. We're a small volume, and so we've been able to work really closely with them. We're also more demanding, frankly, because we do have a plate that lines up exactly, and we need a precise fit inside the upper. So we've been um, so we're, we're, we're hard more, on them. Yeah, we're plus or minus as little as possible, which in the, as, as you guys probably know, in the footwear industry, you know, plus or minus two or three yeah, is becoming the standard. Yeah. So we're, we're very precision oriented. But I think one thing we should point out with this type of foaming of PBACs, I mean, the, it holds up much, much, much longer. So well, it's, it's quite different than what maybe um, – the, some of the, your listeners will be used to when you say P-backs and we talk about some of those super okay. shoes. Yeah, if you think of a road racing shoe, yeah. an X percent from Nike or so something. It's you guys have made a decision, different. a very conscious decision on every component of this shoe. Yes. This is your shoe. There's not a line of shoes. This is the shoe. This is the shoe. And yeah. so you spent time thinking about what phone oh. would work best. Obsessing. Why, would yeah, why, <laughs> why did you obsess on a P-backs? Super critical from what's the advantage? Well, we wanted that first and foremost, that liveliness, right? I think there's a liveliness that PBAX delivers and it's and it's light as well, right? But there's a light, lightweight liveliness that exists with PBAX. The only problem is it's breaking down really quick. So with this different foaming process, you know, this shoe can get four times as much, you know what? I mean, it's all in theory, but like it can get 400, 450. I mean, it's not at those 100, 150 that you hear about when you think about the road PBAX shoes. So it's it's quite a different experience, but it still has that liveliness. Um, and that's that's really key. Yeah, the energy return is what people love, the sensation of the PBAX. And we wanted that to bring it to trail and make it appropriate, not be so soft and felt unstable. So the durometer is appropriate. And then yeah. making it last longer felt like it had to be part of the story. Well, Robbie, I know you want to get to the meat meat. Yeah. And now we're at it. We're at yeah. it. Yeah. Get there. We're at the carbon to plate. Ask. And this is part of the system, honestly. The 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 P backs and how this comes together, there's they, they they go hand in hand like like other shoes do, but in, in a totally different way because this carbon plate is removable, which I don't okay. think anybody else is offering uh, that to our knowledge. But this carbon is unique too, so where do you well, want to start? I mean, we saw people <laughs> cutting apart yeah, their vapor flies and trying to get the plate out to look at it. <laughs> if you get this shoe, you can just pull it out and pull out the plate. You can literally it. pull it out. It's and a Carbitex plate, right? Carbitex. Yes. What's the advantage of that over some traditional? There's a few. Um, one is that it's an asymmetric type of construction, and that's their proprietary secret sauce. So when you flex it in the direction that the foot flexes when you're running, it gets stiffer the farther you flex, which is a great idea for trail. So if you're Ocean. going uphill and you yeah. need a little extra support, you're at some angles, you've got more, more there. On the other side, though, it flexes very easily in the opposite direction, which most carbons do not. And why is that advantageous for trail running? It's just from a conformability, from a trail feel standpoint. You're not slapping this rigid thing and fighting it on every step. But if you're hitting roots and rocks, you're getting kinda, some protection, yeah. like a like a plate, uh, stone plate. Uh, but but, it, will down but it, it will be able to yeah. fold over a rocks as it needs to. So in terms of edging, off camber things, so it's, it's not just giving that a hard lot better. plate feel. No, right. It's giving you kind of a natural feel for the trail. So prior perception, is that something that we... Prior perception, yeah. That's, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. that's <laughs> the word perception. Uh, yeah, I don't know big we words. Need to learn that. <laughs> um, anyway, you get that still from the yeah. trail, but for the performance side of it, you also get what people like in a plate, which is that... The propulsion. The propulsion that that yeah. kind of yeah push off. So it, it is kind of giving you the best of all worlds for the trail. We, we really feel that it's it's almost ideal for the trail in that way. Right. And we also, you know, with articulating the forefoot instead of keeping it as one piece, allowing yeah. kind of the first and second med head to operate a little independently, articulating it appropriately for trail too. So, um, you know, I all of that. Like, I feel like this is magic or something. I don't understand how it it's pretty special it, it, yeah. in one direction. Like it's Robbie, I'll, I'll explain <laughs> science to you. <laughs> no. It's, it is. I, I mean, we felt the no, same agree, way. It, it's Robbie. pretty special material. And I, that's why even when we've talked to our athletes early on and, and described the shoe and talked them through it, the carbon plate was always like, mm, I don't know, but I can take it out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You can take it out. But then after running in it, I think 
you realize it, yeah. it it's not how it works intrusive it doesn't yeah. like scream that it's there right um and we did hear as the pace picks up they do feel it more but in a in a good way so yeah. i know, can say there uh, there has not been an athlete that's taken it out now you guys aren't pro athletes by no means <laughs> we do not claim that no. so a lot of people they want to go immediately when they hear about carbon plate and they think about performance and they think about well it's not for me because i'm not running five minute miles yeah how does this shoe translate to someone who is a trail runner that is running you know average mid-pack paces right. How, what is the benefit they're well, getting out of this? Yeah, this shoe would be quite different. I mean, because you're actually going to get what you want out of it, depending on the pace that you're putting into it, honestly. So it's going to act as just protection for a lot of, you know, if you're going slow, it's just going to act similar to a rock plate in that way. But then when you start going and, and you do increase the pace or you need that extra, that's that's stiffness when you're pushing off, um, you're going to get that. So I, I really think, you know, I'm not, we're not saying the carbon is a, uh, pace specified or something like that yeah. but but it does it will almost respond. adapt to your <laughs> and respond to your pace yeah so i think in many ways it's 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 much different um it's not so linear um in the way it functions as the car most of the carbon plates maybe that are out there on the market right now and the, the last piece i would say that's kind of critically important too is the construction of it and that it's not glued it's not laminated in and that's why I bought this really fancy demo. <laughs> He's you going see to what show this is? Us, it's a post-it note. This is a yes. stack of post-it notes. And this this from... This is his favorite demo, by the way. He yeah, this... this <laughs> our, old, our, our old friend Steve McDonald loved this one, too. Yeah. Where it just illustrates kind of when you have a lot of material stacked up, we don't have that much in this shoe, but, you know, if it's only attached on one end, it's still flexible. Each mm. piece can kind of still do what it wants to do. As soon as I lock the other side, too, and then try to bend it, I get weird buckling... It's fighting me. It's not working with me anymore. Yeah. And so our approach in having the carbon plate attach in a way that doesn't use glue allows the midsole to cushion and enter, do its energy return thing without being affected by the carbon and vice versa. So the carbon can do its thing and they can torque and deflect independently. And it allows us to take this out for customization for our athletes, yeah. uh, which is a, a a huge thing for us as you know developing this brand figuring out what's the right stiffness and a huge thing for the athletes too yeah do you see that in the future there would be maybe your components like oh i want to you know trade out the carbotex plate for a different shape or a different yeah. Yeah. yeah we hope to get there you know this this is the part of it where there's quite a few new things on the shoe between asking people to think about trimming their lugs or taking a plate out and Placing it, even boa is still a relatively new thing in this space. You're jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we but, can get. But can, the, <laughs> the, I think there's an education portion to this, and we have to listen to the athletes and to to our consumers. And if we get a lot of people saying, "Hey, I'd really like a softer plate or a stiffer plate, or the midsole's too firm," is there a softer one? We'd we'd love to be able to offer those things, like yeah. component based. It's interesting because I don't think there's anything like this on the market where you can kind of switch out the ride of the feel. So, you know, as a shoe reviewer, Robbie, we always take a look at stuff and we're like, I wish it just had this. And it's usually quite subjective. Like Robbie could have sure. one thing he likes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he prefers a little firmer feel underfoot than maybe I do. Right. And right. so to be able to switch it out, we could have the same shoe tuned differently yep. and, and have it work. Um, I guess that's just me rambling again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's different. You're right, and that I think is just going to be one of our one of the things we're going to have to make sure we're good at explaining to athletes and making sure people, you know, aren't intimidated. You don't have to do a thing. You can get the shoe, put it on, and go for a run. Yeah, you don't I have mean, to be tinkering with everything if you don't want to. But it does open the door for those that do, and I think we see that in other areas of equipment. You know, cycling shoes have things you can tweak. Ski, ski boots, ski you can boots. adjust the cant, and you know, I mean, there's a whole right. bunch of you know, small cottage industries set up around fitting a ski boot, right? Yeah. We don't want to go that far, Super but feet. we want to put it in into the, the hands of the athletes and, and see what they do. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, we got, uh, I guess, four layers so far. Mm -hmm. Let's go for the fifth one. All right. The upper. Final layer. And, and so in the, in the layers, <laughs> we just, goes to the, way, the layers we just talked about, the, the carbon plate and the, and the P-backs, those are drop-ins. So they actually fit within the upper. And um, we'll point out a few things. I think let's start with the, the dual BOA. Um, it's the Li2, which is for people who don't know what Bo is. It's a 
Can you describe how the system works? Yeah, it's a dial. It's a dial um, system where you tighten it one way and it uh, clockwise, and it tightens down. And then with these dials, you can actually just go back the other way and it loosens, or you can pop. Okay. So there's like, well, like in, in previous boa, you ha could only pop. pop. You yes. kind of go backwards, right? Right. So this is this is definitely. Mm -hmm. um, their newest, their newest most premium statement okay. and and you'll find it on also um say on some high-end cycling shoes um you won't find it anywhere uh, else why why boa rather than traditional lacing well first of all fit i'm um, just as important as all the other stuff we just talked about for kevin and me fit has been something i would say our entire career that we've been obsessing on like if something fits better we believe you'll have a better experience you'll go faster and we feel it's underrated um to a bit to a large degree. Yeah, better fit is better performance. And yeah. um, I mean, think, a lot of people have tried it that we've seen like Saucony with the, what was that fit that we always Isofit? make fun of? Isofit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have tried different ways to get that fit. Yeah. What is the well, with, difference? Yeah, with BOA, you have precision increments as you tighten it down. So you can get ultra precise, you know. Uh, so that's that's one thing that's very unique about BOA. The, with the other thing with two dials, we can actually regionally tighten down the forefoot um, midfoot and heel so it gives you a real precision not only on the tightening but also on what you're tightening down so is that so, this shoe up does this shoe upper accommodate a wide range of foot shapes it's pretty good at that yeah it is pretty good at that because of the the boa system and this um what we're calling or we're not calling what boa is calling the perform fit wrap so we worked like very tightly with them on this um you know, from design, development, engineering. So um, that's kind of our approach with everything is like, how do we work with our partners uh, in a really uh, tight fashion and get to something that we're both really, really happy with at the end. And this perform fit wrap that, I mean, as it's, it's just as much their input as our input, you know. Right, so, you made recent updates right before the shoe launch. <laughs> we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Just to lock in from feedback from one of your our athletes. athletes. Yeah. A few of our athletes, actually. So, And, then, and that's kind of the, the, the beauty. I mean, we can be really nimble um, with how we work and with how we work with our partners as well to kind of get that, that last, um, they say 10%, but I say even like last 2 or 1% of tuning um, in. So... Yeah, we're really excited about the fit um, on this, and I think it's really unique to the industry as well. Right. So you guys could be full of shit. So we're going to bring in Don, <laughs> yes. who's yes. actually ran, wear tested, giving you feedback from his own feet. One um, race is in the shoe. Yeah, one race is in the shoe. Yeah, and plans to win many more. He's a stud. We've known him for a while, right? Yeah. I've known Don. Well, he used to review for us back in the day, and he uh, also worked. At, I, I think I knew him at Newton. I met him through. Mike Nesladek, who's probably one of the nicest guys in the world. So that's how we knew Don. And now he's with Speedland. So, Don, why don't you come in? All right. So here we have Don Reichel. By the way, Don's been on our podcast before. Yeah. Like, I just <laughs> I just remember that. Yeah, he uh, has. He's, he's the best guest, best guest we've ever had. Better yeah. than Ilya Kipchoge. It's a good time. <laughs> Stephanie Flippin uh, yeah. was, uh, I think, my favorite. But, you know. Don's pretty cool. Yeah, he's an all right guy. <laughs> Anyways, Don, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. Excited to, to be live. Yeah, How cool yeah, is this space? Live. It is crazy. Live in Baltimore. Dreams too. come true. Yeah, yeah. My first time in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. How, how is it so far? Uh, it's actually really nice. Yeah, cool. Didn't you take him out to the trails this morning? I did. We were going to do a, what, four-mile run? <laughs> yeah. What happened? It turned into double that. Yeah, we ended up doing like nine, low, close like to nine. nine. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it was a walk run. It was ultra like runner a, morning. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't aggressive. In pure ultra runner. Uh, yeah, yeah. Robbie's. Uh, hey, the waterfall is just a, a quarter mile this way. <laughs> Three, and Three and a half miles, miles later. later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Don, worth it. How'd you get hooked up with Speedland? Uh, you guys actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> loaded that deck All right. um <laughs> so, yeah so speedland you guys start talking what do you want bags of money uh no <laughs> i uh style. money money doesn't mean a whole lot in this industry to what me what got you right? interested in being on this team yeah why um I, when, when you guys told me the, the idea that uh, Kevin and Dave were, were doing something different and um, gave me a little bit of their background I was interested and then um, dove in and I actually had a conversation with, with Kevin and Dave and 
just kind of got into their brain a little bit about how they were approaching running shoes and what they were doing with this shoe. And you know, I have a background in running shoes and have worked in the industry and have reviewed and, and you know a running shoe. I know I know the running shoes. I, I gave these guys a tour of my house and you know every closet and every room. There, has, there were running shoes. It has yeah. different <laughs> running shoes. So I, I I'm definitely really passionate in, in talking to them. It was it was the same language and you could just hear the passion that they had for what they were building and um, the obsession over getting this thing right. And right then and there, I was, I was sold on the idea and, and, and knew that this was something I wanted to be a part of. With that, you started running in the shoe. And we don't care about the philosophy. We don't care about the components. We don't care about that if the shoe sucks. Can you talk us through, does the shoe suck? <laughs> <laughs> the shoe does not suck. Let's start there. Um, the, the shoe is is definitely unique, and it's 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 an experience. Um, you're going to uh, feel something different, and it's it's positive, and it's and it's lively, and it's it's fun, right? You put it on. So, uh, one of the really neat things about this process is that Kevin and Dave have been so receptive to feedback. And it's, I mean, I, I have a, a pyramid of, of, uh, of SLPDXs in my house for a reason, because anytime you give them any feedback on something, it's, it's going to be addressed. It's going to be fixed. So it's What's been, some of the feedback that you've had on previous models that you've seen changes in the current model? The, the biggest changes that I've seen are the upper, the upper change. Um, the material is, is vastly improved over the first iteration that I had the um, the strapping on the top of of it the the fit of the heel um, just everything to even just talking to them about the stiffness of the plates for what I wanted and, and how I wanted it and um, they're willing to you know make some calls and a couple of days later hey we got some pairs out in the mail to you so um, just their level of detail of wanting to get it right for their athletes is just off the charts. It's, it's something from my perspective as kind of a shoe nerd and an athlete. Uh, it's, it's something that I, you know, could have dreamed on this for my entire career and never had it. And so being able to be a part of this team and, and feel like I'm involved in this process is, it's just really special. It's interesting because as an athlete, you don't have a design background necessarily in shoes. You know, what works, what doesn't work. But you get to kind of have a translator through Dave and Kevin yep. that you say, this is what's happening. And they say, here's how we'll fix it. And has that conversation been pretty seamless? Is it easy to, to communicate what you want in the shoe? Yeah, I, they speak the same language. They or, or I maybe in a different language, but they translate it. Uh, they they they're they're bilingual, and I'm just the you know the jock that's out there running and says shoe don't fit good, um, <laughs> something like that. And they're like, okay, this is what's up. So no, they they know the the language of the athlete. So when I told them something about it or, or sent them an email and, and said, hey, this is what's up, or my first experience running it, I said, hey guys, let's let's just jump on a Zoom tonight. Yeah, like immediate. I remember I just got back from surfing and. I I was like, you want to jump on right now? And, I, and he's like, yeah. So, I mean, literally we just jumped on the three of us and, and started talking about it right there. You know, and that's, that's the kind of relationship that, you know, that Kevin and I want to have with every athlete is how can it be seamless? How can you feel comfortable to want to, you know, FaceTime us right, right then? Yeah. And that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. I, it was, it was good. And they yeah. were receptive. It was, I mean, the shoe was, was really good. And they've taken the feedback from you know, me and the other athletes and, and made a just a phenomenally great product. So you have performed in the shoe. And today you're, you had a pair where all your lugs were clipped off, so customized for a smoother ride. Right. Was there a race or a particular reason why you wanted the smoothed out? Yeah, so my um, a couple a couple of things. So I raced my first race of the season uh, was on a smoother course, and so I, I raced in a in a clip lug shoe for that race. And then my my key race of this year is is level one hundred, and that will be a clip lug shoe for me. How did the race go this uh, first trial one? I won. I was the, yeah. just a minor detail. I uh, I believe that was the first race so experience of the shoes? I, I, I believe it was. Yeah. If I buy the Speedland shoe, will I win races? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Thomas, I know a little bit about your running background, so I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, but it's See, it's the honest right. truth. I mean, comes hey, out. He's, he's being honest. It's not the shoe. Wait, so <laughs> I'm not gonna win. <laughs> is, is this a down? Yeah, well, know. well, I'll I'll race direct for you right. and keep everybody out of yeah, it. Except I get a you know half hour for head start. There we go. And a ride in the back of a golf cart. One of five k. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the coolest things I thought about the the fifty k you ran on the salt flats was that you and and this you know it helps that you're obviously very in tune with shoes but you were able to customize it basically for that course um, which is the same thing you'll be able to customize it obviously for Leadville but I just thought that was a really cool thing and like the stuff we talked about or the changing out the plate customizing the lugs like that drastically changes the the shoe oh yeah <laughs> for sure um I, I gotta ask you what's your favorite part about the shoe or maybe like something you haven't experienced in other trail shoes what makes it unique yeah that, that's just different for you yeah so well it's obviously changing out the plate is is something that's unheard of in yeah. the industry right we've run in next percents and plated shoes in the past but that is what it is you buy it and that, you're stuck with that but it's just cool i can take out the plate even if i've on an easy soft day and not have that stiffness in there i can put it back in so that's that's obviously the thing about this shoe to me that stands out is just here's a plate that you can take in and out the other element that i actually really love is is how they've done the boa strapping on the top of the foot um it allows me i have a, a weird foot and then I, I i like a really loose forefoot but i like more tight around the ankle um, to hold it back. And so it allows me to really dial in that fit between the two dials. So having right. a, a dual boa allows me to keep that front one loose and tighten that, that back one a little bit more, um, which gives me just the perfect fit, which I've never been able to achieve before with a, a traditional lace That's system. Cool. So you, you've tried this shoe, you put it through the test. Obviously you like it, you're proud to be part of, of 100%. this shoe. Like I said, we haven't tried it, but we, you and I have looked at each other's shoe reviews, gone over all that yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. pretty much, you could probably guess if yeah. this shoe is going to work for me at this point. Um, I'm going to ask your advice, Don. Do you think that this shoe is going to, and this is a layup, but <laughs> <laughs> do you think this shoe, that I'll enjoy this shoe as much as, as you are, that uh, I won't be writing yeah. a bad review for this guy? Yeah, <laughs> and it's and it's twofold. One, it's just a damn good shoe but to it you know if, if you don't like something about it you can change it up right it's it's not made for my foot it's made for somebody that wants to kind of tinker with with a fit feel and drive Are you of a it. tinker do you like to tinker with stuff in general i do yeah i like always like to like well what if i like x y and z better who knows yeah. and until you try them all you're never really going to fully understand see i feel like i'm on the other end of the spectrum where i i'm an out of the box guy just want to be told just, like get, running this, is, this this is good great this is it that's that would be my only thing with the shoe is like am i gonna like i'd be hesitant to cut the lugs because it's a one-way ticket like you said then don't yeah, yeah. right and so like, i'd <laughs> probably be like okay and then i know maybe a month down the road i'll be like would be good. <laughs> try. I'm still upset that I popped my air bubble in my Jordan Force. That you know, I had to see what was inside. So yeah. what what you could do is is experiment with just maybe cutting a couple off, yeah. right? Don't you don't have to commit to the full right. uh, I'll cutting them all off. Experiment, right? Because I I run in Colorado, so I have lots of different kinds of trails. So um, you know I'm gonna start cutting different patterns off and experiencing what it feels like just to have maybe half of them on there versus all of them versus none of them um, and start really tinkering and, and being able to give these guys feedback. Mm -hmm. Hey, like prime Colorado 14 lug pattern is, you know, X, Y, and yeah, Z. Do you have and suggested? Lug we do. And we have that yeah. actually. Yeah. So if, if you go, you know, dive deep into the site, there's actually even a manual. Oh, wow. um, that, we were that, talking about it on the trail today. You missed it because you were ahead of us. But um, <laughs> they, um, leading the way to the waterfall. Yeah. Uh, we, but we uh, we were talking about how cool the different visual ways that you could show like this terrain equals the mm -hmm. best ride that you're going to get. Right. This would be an optimal optimal ride. I also think it's interesting because you know that on your shoe you tend to wear like if you land a little bit on the lateral edge, it starts to wear down the shoe. Yeah. So I might leave those lugs longer on that yeah. side knowing that I'm going to naturally wear them 
wear them down. Yeah, I mean, it depends how in tune you are yeah, exactly with, with what your, your running style is and what you already know about. We've even had athletes come back and say like, yeah, I have a pressure point like right up, you know, at the, the, the somewhere towards the front of the foot. And they, I'll just clip that one. You know, that yeah. way I won't have that pressure point anymore. So, I mean, you have to be pretty in touch to know to yeah. do that. But I think someone spending 375 is going to be... They're going to be pretty in touch. This and, isn't going to be somebody just, like, walking to dicks and going, right. I just want to start running. Right. But to your point, like, even if you don't want to mess with anything, it's going to be set up great just right out of the box. Like, right. you don't 100%. need to. And we're not... We're, I don't think... Kevin and I wouldn't recommend that you actually do anything right out of the box. Like, go run it yeah. and yeah. see how it feels. And then maybe you do get a sensation like, okay... Um, you know, and we do have recommendations. Yeah, if you're in Southern California and it's like this climate pretty much all year round, yeah, okay, you're pretty safe in doing that that love trip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, save save a little weight too. But you know, uh, one of the other things I want to talk about was that you like sustainability is a major part of this shoe, and that you can uh, if somebody reaches the end of the life cycle with their shoe, yeah. they can send it back to you, and then what happens? And then we'll we'll take them back, and then we will, and so the contact us, send you a, a return label to send it back to us, uh-huh. and then we will actually deconstruct it, right, because there's a stitch, basically, that holds this chassis. Is there glue to, as well, or is it just... There's just a, just a tack of glue, so there's very little, almost okay. enough, so we can easily cut the stitch, pull it apart, pull all the pieces uh-huh. apart, and... Because they're different, obviously, substrates here, you have to recycle them different ways, but we're able to do that. And we'll partner, ultimately, we hope to partner with different companies that are that are even our partners on the shoe and give them back the parts as well. But even in the short term, we'll be able to take the parts back, deconstruct it, and recycle it. So that's definitely uh, you know part of the short-term and long-term mission. You've seen my shoe wall. You will never get the shoe back. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> for, for science. Yeah. Yes. It, your environmental thing will be it, it, that it's basically a wall in our house. Yeah. It's yeah. Envir- It's like environmental science. Yeah. It's a thing, right? And it, and the shoe lasts quite a long time, so it's not yeah. it's not a shoe that we expect to get back anytime soon. Well, you the know, components, but, you talked about the Dyneema with it being the, one of the strongest materials. Yeah. It, it's not going anywhere. No. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've put it through some pretty tough terrain and rocky catching it on boulders and stuff and i mean there's never been anything that i've worried about um i know earlier you guys talked about the boas and i've intentionally snagged it on just about every boulder i could find just as a, <laughs> like a confidence boost and yeah. it like it pulled a rock off a boulder one yeah. time like it's it's solid front to back during a race uh does the lacing stay secure throughout is that something mm-hmm. you need to adjust or is that yeah i mean, certainly don't need to adjust i i love going back to the boa um hard downhills i might want to tighten up that forefoot a little oh, bit yeah. more being able to just drop down mid run and like that, that, clink clink yeah done and then when you get to the base loosen it back up a little bit it it just it it gives you time back. And if you're somebody that's obsessed with just shaving seconds, minutes off a hundred mile run, yeah. like, gosh, here's, here's some time back. If you don't want to tie shoes or um, things like that, I know it's, it's pretty minor, but everything adds up in a, in a big race. Yeah. yeah. I would assume also in the distances that you're doing, like you're talking about Leadville, which is a hundred miles, your foot's going to expand. Mm-hmm. Things yeah. are going to change to be able to quickly adjust the shoe as your foot ex- expands, the comfort wise can yep. make a big difference in Huge. finishing the race. And that's nice having the, the new BOA system because the past ones you had to like pop it and un- loosen the whole thing up, then redial, find your sweet spot. But with this, just doing back and forth. Yeah, you can fine tune it. You know, there's never that too far moment, like in the seatbelt where you pull too far <laughs> yeah. and it locks and you gotta let it all the way back yeah. out. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the worst. So, John, where can people follow your journey to Leadville here? Yeah, so easiest follow for me is is Instagram at Run with Dawn. Um, you'll see a lot of of Speedland photos uh, up there with me. I've, I think I've put six hundred plus miles on <laughs> these, these babies now, so uh, a fair amount of good Speedland photos up there. So no regrets giving up all the uh, various shoes you get to wear when you're <laughs> no. Um, gosh, I mean, if you would have told ten year old me, I'd, I'd be working with a shoe company as a you know as a sponsored athlete and be a partner of the company and, and help them build it i would think you were crazy or dreaming so a lot of athletes can get shoe sponsorships or shoe, shoe deals or free pairs and very very few get their chance to to work with a team like this and 
really feel like it's something that I've helped develop and been a part of the launch and, you know, just been invested in. So it's, it's a really special thing for me to uh, have Kevin, Dave, and the team and, and Speedland as part of my journey to Leadville this year. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, we feel the same. We feel really lucky, obviously, to have Don and just the, the way we communicate. It's just seamless. And you, don't, you just don't – you don't see that. And in, in we in Kevin and I have obviously 20-plus years. You just don't see that. This way, athlete. yeah. I mean, you see, you see, you see, you see nice relationships, but you don't see it like this, like yeah. where you know. Obviously, we're just we want to make sure things are right. We listen to everything Don says, and then you know, if we we'll do anything basically. If we have to go wherever we need to go, if we need to go to his house, like we're gonna get this right. Which um, they've been, they've <laughs> stayed, yeah, they've been. they well, stayed I mean, at it my house. Like it's been a really <laughs> beneficial yeah. relationship for both of you. You're getting a yeah. product that you feel confident running and racing in. Totally, they're getting intel on how to build a better shoe from an athlete that's putting in lots of miles on it. It seems like a you know perfect situation. Yeah. 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 For sure. Anyway, so the shoe is available for pre-order right now and ships early August around that time frame. It ships it'll it'll yeah, delivery will be mid-August. Okay, cool. Um yeah, runspeedland.com and uh, <laughs> at runspeedland for Instagram. So definitely follow them there, follow Don. Um yeah, anything else? I think that wraps it up. Yeah, it's great. Thank now, you. But we are going to do a video. So there's going to be a video of this podcast. We're also going to be doing a video breakdown of the shoe so you can get a better look at all the components uh, with both Don and Dave. And you can check that out. Uh, that should be out around the same time as this podcast. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. That's the best place to get your shoe breakdown. Visual, visual shoe breakdown. <laughs> like moving pictures and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Nice. We'll probably even throw in some fun running videos of Don in the park today. Yeah. We had some fun this morning. Possibly standing under a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good cool. stuff. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Awesome. Bye.